Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.U. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In this third video tutorial on developing an e commerce site using Drupal and the Commerce module, I want to show you how we can create product attributes, uh, specifically something like a size or color for t shirts, and how we can enable that on our add to cart form. Uh, but before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto Website Developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. This one will be up as soon as I have it completed. Uh, each is only $20, and the more you buy, the more you save. Um, additionally, if you don't have the $20 but would like to help out and give back, uh, you can always give this video tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that. It helps to keep me on track, but also helps to promote the video tutorials, uh, YouTube, promoting them to other users. So with that said, let's get back over to our local host. And here we're at Drupal, or rather localhost slash commerce. And this is the development site that I've been using. You'll notice that I've created a new product here as I was testing some things out. But what we need to do first is get some modules. So I've gone ahead and I've done that using Drush. You'll see that I've gone ahead, Drush DL, commerce product attributes, uh, and I've gone ahead and I've enabled that. It's just one um, module that we're gonna go ahead and enable. And what it does is it provides us the ability to modify some views. So uh, the reason for this video tutorial is twofold. One, I wanted to show you how to create the actual product attributes, but two, actually display the power of commerce that I've been talking about with its integration with views. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to go over to store and I've got products here. I've got product type. You'll notice I've created a t-shirt. So let's go check out what this is. I'm going to manage the fields here. And you'll notice that I've added uh, the field color to this. And so color is a list uh, of checkbox and radio buttons. And if we go ahead and we edit this, you'll see that it's a required field. And uh, I've enabled this as a field to function as an attribute. Uh, so this comes with commerce. And what I've done here is I've chosen red, green, blue, or orange as the allowed values. And I'm only allowing one specific value. So go ahead and we'll save those settings. Now we've got to add some products. And I can't remember if I've done this or not. Yeah, so I do have two products. I've got this, uh, they should be named consistently, but they're not. I've got Drupal shirt red and I've got orange Drupal shirt. Um, and both are of the product type t-shirt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my content types and I'm going to add a new content type. And I'm going to name this uh, shirt display product, or something like that. Doesn't matter. Um, and I don't care about the defaults. I mean, you would obviously change these up, but I'm just going to go ahead and go save add fields. And so, just like before, I need to add a product reference. Um, and I'm going to leave this as a select list. And this is just going to be a t shirt, uh, t shirt, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Uh, this is going to be a required field. Uh, it's only going to be able to pull in t-shirts. We go ahead, number of values. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think this is what we need to leave it as unlimited. So we'll go ahead and save this setting. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to content, add content, and I'm going to go to shirt display product. This is what I'm adding. And we have a problem. There we go. So uh, Drupal t-shirt uh, buy your own Drupal shirt today and then here I'm going to select both of these products to be displayed so I'm going to go ahead and save this and now you can see I've got Drupal t-shirt and I've got this color and I can choose red or orange which is nice and it actually will update what color I've chosen here and I can add this to the cart now when I go to add to cart um, I should probably just remove these so we stay consistent and sorry let me remove all of these just so that we are consistent so let's go back to the home page go back to drupal shirt I'm going to add the red one go to my cart and now you can see a uh, little bit anticlimactic i should have removed this field i need to save that now you can see that i've got uh, drupal shirt red here and i've got this total 9.99 and if i click into here uh, you can see it takes me back and really, that was a bad example. I should have done orange. So let's go add orange. Go back to our cart. And if I click on orange, you'll see that it still says it's red. It takes me back to a product uh, that shows red. It doesn't actually update the attribute here. Um, what I'd like to be able to do is click into orange and have it take me back to the proper field. And that's what the product uh, commerce product attributes module does. So what we need to do is edit this view, which is a nice thing about Drupal Commerce is that all of uh, its kind of displays are actually integrated with views. So I can go ahead and edit this view real quickly and I can go add. And what I'm gonna do is add commerce line item product attributes. And let's go add and configure. And I'm just gonna apply this. 
and I'm going to rearrange some things here. So I want to get rid of the title because um, attributes is going to be the exact same thing. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to remove, put this up here and I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to save this and it'll take me back. And now you can see if I hover over Drupal shirt red, the path down at the bottom has the path to the actual product, but then it also passes in the line item ID. So let's go back to orange here and you can see I get back to it and now I have orange pre-selected. Uh, this is obviously a bug here. Color should not be listed as red. Um, maybe that's something we should report to module developers um, because that is not right. But you can see that it was at least pre-selected. We can always just uh, probably just hide that on our uh, content display settings until that bug is fixed. Um, but that's it for the module, really. Um, what this enables us to do is now you can create products that actually have attributes. So I only did color, but you could do size, have all your different sizes. Uh, and then have your shopping cart here actually have the product attributes listed. You would just change this title and then users can go back to that and go ahead and edit that. And then when you go to checkout here, uh, you can see that I've got Drupal shirt red. You could obviously, if you wanted to update this view, because that is also a view, and then go ahead and take this a little bit further. So I know that's just a quick tutorial. I wanted to really kind of get into it to show you the fact that you can now add some attributes to your products, uh, just like you can in other commerce suites in Drupal. Um, and that the power of views here, uh, anything that's actually displayed to the user is actually a view that we can go ahead and we can modify. The one thing to note is that when we created these product attributes, if I go ahead and I add one of the other products that we have, uh, the, the Bailey um, Pitcher product, if this would ever work, let's go Susie with toys, and I go ahead and I add this, you'll notice if we go to add to cart, it actually pulls in the full product. Um, so this is something that you'd want to you want to manage probably do it through a uh, different display type uh, and make sure that that is handled properly. But uh, as I said, here you can actually add some uh, attributes, allow users to create some uh, some options and, and purchase those options and then go ahead with your uh, your checkout status. So I hope that helped. Uh, I know this was a quick video tutorial. I wanted to show you the power of views. I wanted to show you how you create some attributes. In the next video tutorial, what we'll do is look at payment gateways, specifically PayPal and how you can start accepting some payments. Thanks very much for watching.